two circles here. So every point on the circle is the same distance from the center of the circle. To label a circle, use a circle symbol that has a dot in it and name it by its center. Okay. You have to put a dot in it so it doesn't look like an O or a zero. All right. Let's see. Do you guys remember what the parts, the things in a circle are called? Let's start with. Radius. Radius. I got the first one. I just want to get the second one. Okay, here's the bonus question. What's plural of radius? Radii. 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 I'm surprised you guys knew that one. Okay, if it goes from one point on the circle to another through the center, it's called the. What's the relationship between the length of the radius and the length of the diameter? Radius is half the diameter, or the radius times two equals the diameter. Okay, what if it goes from one point on a circle to another, and it's like a string. Cord. Shut up. Okay, like a guitar chord, you know how the chords go across the hole in the guitar. Uh, <clears throat> so, a diameter is a type of chord, because it, but it's a chord that goes through the center. So, a diameter is a type of chord. Uh, what if we go from like, by the way, what, a radius is a what in geometry. This from here to here would be a what? Line segment. Line segment. So, if they say, name the radius, or so are these, diameters, chords. If they say, name the radius, name the diameter, name the chord, you would say like segment AB or something like that. These are all line segments. Um, here's something that's not a line segment. What's it called when you're talking about from here to here? It might be new for you guys, I don't know. Um, it's called an arc. Not all the way around, I'm just from like you. So an arc is just a piece of the circle, kind of like a piece of crust. So, and it has a symbol, and it looks like you put the two letters just like a segment or something, but it looks like a little arc. Okay, so if I say arc AB, I'm talking about this thing right here. Um, did I skip anything? Okay, so. Let's talk about circumference. What does circumference mean? The distance around a circle. Circle means around, I don't know what parent means, but. Uh, anyways, the distance around a circle. Does anybody happen to maybe know what the formula to find? Uh, diameter times pi, yes. Well, and what is pi? Pi is a, about 3.14. Some of you might have, or probably maybe all of you have a pi button on your calculator. But if you want to just use 3.14, that's fine. Um, where pi came from is that the Greeks figured out that no matter how big your circle is, it takes three diameters, a little bit more than three diameters, to go around the circle. Like one, two, three. So it takes about 3.14 diameters to go around the circle. So that's why the circumference is diameter times pi. Okay, but there's another way of writing this. What can I turn diameter into? Diameter is equal to what? Two times. So another formula is two times the radius times pi. So if they give you the radius, you have to do it times two. And then that times pi. Okay, so both of those. I think you might, that might be all for circles. There's so much we are talking about. So, so much. None of it, it's not tricky. It's not a, but there's just a lot of info. Uh, the region is just the stuff inside, inside the, uh, the boundary of the shape. Okay, do you guys know what a polygon is? Oh, that's a, I don't know. Closed figure with sides. Yeah. Huh? Was it closed figure with sides? Closed is part of it, yeah. Um, it has four sides. 
not necessarily, no. Poly means many, so it could be a, any number of sides, but polygon just means it has straight edges, it's closed curve, it's a closed simple curve, uh, but it has to have straight edges. It has to have line segments for sides. So what's the polygon with the girls? You're about to be split. What's the polygon with the least number of sides? Triangle. Triangle. Yeah. That's the least you can have. Uh, so that's three sides. So it's got to be closed. Okay, you can't. That's not a triangle. That, that, uh, that's not a polygon. Uh, it also can't, it's got to be line segments. So you can't have like this or anything. No curves. All right. Um, so three sided is called a triangle. You guys will probably miss this next one. What's a four sided polygon called? Quadrilateral. Why is it not, why is it not a square or a rectangle? Because any four sided shape is a quadrilateral. So it doesn't have to be squares or rectangles. This is a quadrilateral. Uh, five sides? Pentagon. Pentagon. There's a building in Washington, D.C. that looks like a pentagon. It's called the Pentagon. Six? Hexagon. Hexagon. Okay, and then after six, this one people don't know as well. Seven? Um, like a header beater on? Dang it. Okay, hexagons are pretty common, uh, probably because they fit together and make a stop sign. A stop sign is actually an octagon. He, uh, hex hexagons make a like you can make a floor with them or something because they all fit together as well. Uh, soccer ball is made of hexagons. Anyways, um, heptagon not as common. Eight, you guys should know this one. Octagon. And then nine is not very common, but it sounds like it sounds like nine. Monogon. And then ten. A decade is ten years. Decagon is ten seconds. Okay, all of these are in a chart on the bottom of page or bottom right of page thirty-two. So if you forget, it even has eleven and twelve. I've never heard the eleven in decagon. Never heard, never seen, but it's in that chart. Dodecagon. Uh, you guys are going to be responsible for three through ten, though, so you do need to know those. Uh, okay, so you guys, are you on page thirty-two? Do you guys see example two on page thirty-two? Okay, is A a polygon? Yes. yes. What kind? Pentagon. Pentagon. It's got five. Pentagon. Number five is that, or sorry, number five. Is B a polygon? No. Because curve. it's got a curve. It's not a straight edge. C, is that a polygon? Yes. Yes. What kind? Decagon. Each point on the star has two sides, so two times five, ten. Decagon. D, is that a polygon? No. Because no it's not closed. Um, the other way it could not be a polygon is if it's not a simple curve. If it crosses over itself, that's not a polygon. Okay. You guys know what equilateral means? All sides are equal. All sides are equal. Equal sides. Here's a question that probably you guys probably won't know. What's an equilateral uh, quadrilateral called? Square. 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 Yeah. Okay, that's equal. Those are equal, but it's not a square. It's called a rhombus. Okay. That's not actually in this chapter, but it will eventually. Okay. A square has equal sides, but there's more to a square than that. Okay. Equilateral means equal sides. Equal angular 
means guess what? Angle. Equal angles. So what's a quadrilateral that is equilateral and equiangular? Square. Square. Squares. Squares have four equal 90 degree angles, right? So that's why a square is different than a rhombus. A rhombus has different angles. <coughs> okay. If it's both equilateral and equal angular, like everything's perfect, like I always draw, perfect, like if it's a perfect pentagon or whatever, it's called regular. So it's kind of normal. If they, when everything's perfect, it looks kind of like a normal. Like a, a stop sign is a regular octagon. Everything's perfect. Um, like all these angles would be the same. Oh boy. If it was if it was regular, and all the sides would be the same length. By the way, these when I put a little arc in the corner, like a single arc, that means they're all the same. Or if these are the, if you put two arcs, that means these two are the same. If I put a little dash, that means the sides are the same. I did that. Regular. Okay. So much info, so, so much. We're getting there though, we're, we're getting close. Uh, okay, do you guys remember from science, concave, convex? Yeah. Probably talking about lenses. Uh, concave means it caves in. So my little Star Trek symbol from earlier is concave because it has an indention. So just remember caves or cave in. And then convex is anything else, okay? So if there is no K, like a regular rectangle, uh, it's called convex. All right. Uh, what does perimeter mean? Oh. Um, a diagonal, where did I put that pentagon right there? Too messy. A diagonal is a line segment from one vertex to another non-adjacent vertex. <laughs> okay, so it's a line segment from one vertex to a non-adjacent. So this would be two diagonals from point A. Okay, can't go down the line, that would just be part of the polygon. But diagonals go from one corner to another. That's what they mean by a diagonal. Um, <clears throat> perimeter, what does perimeter mean? Like the outside yeah. stuff. The what? The outside stuff. What do you mean the outside stuff? Like the outside stuff. Yeah, it's the distance around the shape, uh, the polygon. So what would the perimeter of this rectangle be? 16 plus 16, like 32. Yeah, 32. So you just add all the sides together, that's it. Uh, what if it said, what's the perimeter now? Close. What does this mean right here? 2x plus 2y. All right, this means 2x times 2y. So we need a plus in there. Can't really simplify that, it's just all the input. Uh, so yeah, it's like you can do 10 plus 6 times 2, or you can do 2 times 10 plus 2 times 6, that works. Or just 10 plus 10 plus 6 plus 6. I think I might have got it all. All right, uh, let's look at number one on page 35. We're gonna be doing odds with you. Number one says classify each figure as a curve, a closed curve, a simple curve, a simple closed curve, or not a curve at all. Use the most specific classification possible. Okay, number one, is that a simple curve? You probably forgot, but simple means it doesn't cross itself. So number one is not simple. 
Is number one a closed curve? No, because no, it doesn't end where it starts. So number one is just curve. Okay, number three. Is that a simple curve? Yes. Yes, because it doesn't cross itself. Is it closed? Yes. Yes, so number three is simple closed curve. All right, what do you guys think number five is? Not, not a curve, because it's not a continuous set of points. On four, does it matter that it goes forever? No, it does not matter. Okay, number seven, the directions say, if the figure is a polygon, classify it by its number of sides. If it is not, explain why not. Then classify any region formed by the closed figure as a convex or concave. So I kind of got two answers on all these. What kind of polygon is it? Or why is it not? And then convex or concave. So on number seven, is that a polygon? Yes, what kind? Octagon. Octagon. Is it concave or convex? Concave. Right, because it's got caves, it's got inden indentions. Octagon, concave. Number nine, is that a polygon? No, because it's kind of what we say when, what we mean when we say curve doesn't mean what the book says when they say curve. So it's kind of, they wrote because it's not made up of line segments or something like that, but uh, that's fine. I don't care. No, because it's curved. Is it concave or convex? convex? Convex because there are no caves. Okay, number 11. Is that a polygon? Yes. yes. How many sides does it have? Four. What's that called? Quadrilateral. 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 Is it concave or convex? Concave. concave. It's got a little bit of an indention. Okay, 13. Name the sides of the polygon on the right. What is the most specific classification of the polygon? Okay, uh, what do you think we could call one of the sides on that polygon? Like the top side, what could we call it? BA B -A what? Segment BA. Okay, and then just keep going around. BA, how many sides are there? Eight. Eight. So you should have eight answers. BA, AH. These are all line segments. And go all the way around. Okay, uh, it says, what is the most specific classification of that polygon? Octagon. If it's a perfect octagon, what else could we say about it? Equilateral and equal angu angular makes it regular octagon. Um, on 14 it says name the five diagonals that have C as an endpoint. So what is one diagonal on 14 that has C as an endpoint? Right. 
CA, AC, those are line segments also, right? Pretty much everything we're doing is line segments. Okay, 15, match each notation with the correct terms, matching. List all correct answers. <clears throat> um, so on A, it says segment XD. And that is a, if you guys see the tire, that's what we're looking at on the bike. Segment XD is a what in that picture? Radius. Radius, so that is option five, option B. Is that somebody's phone? It's on the, it's on the wall. Okay, um, five in Roman numerals, right? So put 15A, B for five. Okay, B, segment DC. Uh, you guys see DC in the picture? What is that? Chord. Chord. Option three. Three Roman numerals. C says just X. X is the what? Center. That's option. D, uh, what did we say that was with that symbol? With the curve symbol over the AD? Arc. Arc AD. So that's option one. E says segment BD. All right, BD goes through the center, so that's the diameter. Option IV. Um, the book put another answer on this one because think you might know what it is. Uh, no. On E. Ow. For segment BD, they put something besides diameter. Cord. Cord. Because it does go from one point on the circle to another. Uh, look at that. All right. Let's go this way. 16 is weird, so we probably should talk about it. What is the intersection? Do you guys remember intersection? This guy? Remember what it meant? What do they have in common? So what do the interior and exterior of a circle have in common? They're both on the circle. Not like what facts do they have in common, but what points do they have in common? We're not really using that picture anymore, the tire. Uh, it's kind of a trick question. The interior and exterior have nothing in common. So what? Uh, no solution, yeah, zero slash, no, 16. Okay, 17, next picture says, name the circle in this figure. How do we name that circle? Yeah, remember there's a circle symbol. C. 19. Uh, name five radii. What do you notice about the lengths? Okay, what are some radii? We need five of them in that picture. CX. CX. And a radius is a what? A line segment. Line segment. So this is one segment CX. What else? CY. CY. A, CP, CP, one more. CT, Okay, what do all, what do we notice about the lengths of all those radii? Oh uh, yeah, we'll just put uh, semicolon equal or something. All radii have to have the same length because any circle is equidistant from this. Any point on the circle is equidistant from the center. Okay, 20 says name two arcs. So you have to just do the arc symbol thing. There's a lot of possible answers, like a, a bunch. So you just have to list two. 21. We're getting there. All right. Um, Name six triangles. Okay, to name a polygon, 
you just use the vertices of the polygon, like the corner points around the polygon. So that little triangle on the left would be called triangle ABC. And there, with triangles, there actually is a symbol. Looks like a little triangle. Shocker. So it's triangle ABC. That's one of the triangles in that picture. What is, we and we need six, so what's another one? ACD, so triangle ACD. It's another one. AD, what? Say again. ACE. Kind of the two triangles on the right, little triangles. What else? What's the other little triangle? Let's get those out of the way. ADE. The two little triangles in the middle on the right make the triangle ACE, which we already got. So what else? Yeah, A, yeah, A, B, D, A, D, B, order wouldn't matter, would it? Triangle, A, B, D, and then we got one more. A, B, E. Yeah, the whole thing. A, B, E, triangle, A, B. Okay, 22 is quite the challenge, and I'm not going to do it with you. It says name all the angles in that picture, except for the straight angles. There are a lot. I told the other class, if you get all of them, I'll give you a bonus point. If you're one or two short, I'll give you normal credit, so it's not really a bonus question. You do need to do it. Uh, when there's a little number in the corner, you can just call it by the number. Sometimes you have to use three letters to name the angle, but you can also, like, instead of saying angle BAC, you could just call that angle five. Instead of saying angle ABC, you could just call that angle B. Do we have to name it every single way that we can? No. It's not name every angle every way, it's name every angle. And there's a lot. Okay. Um, if they're numbered, I would just use the numbers. Number 36, we're jumping down there, it says find the perimeter of each polygon. So how do we do, how did we do that earlier? When we talked about it? Add them all together. That's it. Okay. Number, now we're jumping to the end, 48. Solve and express answers to the nearest tenth. What does tenth mean? First decimal place. So you should be, it should be like 25.7, something like that. Rounding to the first decimal place. Find the circumference of a circle with radius seven. How did we say you could find the circumference of a circle? Right, diameter times pi or two times radius times pi. So on uh, uh, 48, it says the radius is 7. So you just do 2 times 7 times 5. You can use the pi button on your calculator. You can plug in 3.14 for pi. And round it to the tenth place. So that would have been a disaster. Hmm? Yeah, I still have to do all those. I'm just not going to waste my time by helping you guys add. 49, find the diameter of a circle with a circumference of 110. 
Okay, well, we know that diameter times pi should equal the circumference, so that should equal 110. So how do I figure out what the diameter is here? 110 divided by pi. Right, work backwards, pi times diameter. To get rid of the pi, you divide by pi. Divide by pi. So it's 110 divided by 3.14, round to the tenth place. Okay, now I'm done talking.